you miserable fucker. Yeah, that's me, baby. <laughs> ah, Lewis Capone, <laughs> that's what's me. Up? Hello. Yeah. What was the fanciest thing you bought with your dog? Oh, um, I bought a, I bought a house. I bought a house. That's not fancy. That's yeah. necessary. Nice. Necessary, nice. necessary, yes. Congratulations. Uh, it was sent to me by Ed Sheeran. He sent me... A, no, he, he didn't send me as a house. But like he... <laughs> he's like, what? Is he just yeah. gifting houses he's, now? He's got a lot of fucking money, this guy. He's, he's, he's <laughs> like, dude, it is Brewster's millions for me, mate. I cannot <laughs> give this shit away. I am telling you. <laughs> he, um, no, he sent me the link to it. We, were, we became quite close over lockdown. I was asking a lot of questions about second records and yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Picking his brain a lot, and then I was talking about buying a house, and I was like, "Oh, I'm going to move into this place." Like I'm kind of looking for places around Glasgow, and then he sent me a link, and I was like, "Oh, this place looks amazing." And I went and looked at it, and I'm quite like a, I moved it, I looked at it, and I was like, "This is great." I didn't maybe look around enough. I didn't smell it. Did you buy the wrong house because Ed Sheeran told you to buy it, and you got a little excited? Yeah, I got very excited. <laughs> I got very excited soon. <laughs> And, and I'm here to tell you, the house is a fucking shithole. It's uh, a fucking money pit. <laughs> yeah, it's a money pit, and I will be. It has been the bane of my existence for yeah, the last you're couple in of months. Renovation hell now. Bro. Yeah, yeah. I know all about that uh, stuff. And he's like, you want, you want, a, you want a house for your kids. And I'm yeah. like, uh, fuck those kids. Do you know what I mean? I don't, <laughs> yes. I don't know them. Yes. Yeah, I don't yeah. know those guys. Whoa, I might not even, whoa, whoa. Toxic, mean, yes. mas- toxic masculinity <laughs> over here. Hold it down. <laughs> fuck those kids, bro. <laughs> I'm with him. I'm yeah. I may, I may, I may not even like you these guys. Like them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there will definitely be times when you don't like your kids. Yeah, but you have to acknowledge <laughs> that you won't like your kids and, and then, be prepared for it and then accept that when you do like your kids, it's okay because it's just around the corner of the time when you just won't like your kids. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And by the way, here's the newsflash they really don't like you either. Right, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's called true. love, my man. Right, okay, yeah, see, that's see, what love affords yeah. you. Love is just accepting someone that you truly despise. Love is accepting that people can be a good one and yeah. a bad one. Yeah. I like what you said there. Thank you, man. I won't say the C word. No, thank you. But I'm bringing it back to a place where it can be ab- absorbed and adopted in everyday life. Absolutely. In a human way. I love it. Right? I love it. I love it. Yeah. And our children can definitely be good ones and bad ones. Yes. Well, I don't have children, but I know that <laughs> it's good that you're t- speaking specifically as a father. Put this in your pocket, save it for later. You won't have to renovate that advice at all. Okay, right, cool. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? That's, that's for free. Ed Sheeran fucked me. Well, Ed Sheeran's advice costs money one way or the yeah. other. Everybody knows that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. he'll get you in the end. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, he's been praying on my downfall is what's happening. <laughs> this is what yeah. it is. This is what you got to yeah. understand about Ed Sheeran. The guy's a fucking monster. Yeah, like, yeah. He comes across, and you know, you look at him and it's like butter wouldn't melt. Get into him and he'll be in the dollars and cents before you fucking know it. This he'll like, whisper in your right ear, I just outsold you too. Within five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think he's got to the point where he spent so much time writing and poured so much of his life into it mm-hmm. that he would have to actively go against his own instincts to write a and shitter. to write a shitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a lovely chap. I do love him. We do, we do love you, Ed. If this oh, is, he knows this that. is being filmed, yeah? He know, yeah, he Those knows Those cameras that. aren't for sure. Ed, he knows. Well, I don't know about it anymore. You fucking property wank. <laughs> I love you, brother. You mean love, a lot to me. And you know what, Ed? I, I love you too. And he yeah. knows that. He's the great oak, and we're all sitting around it waiting for his nuts to drop. Mate, I've been, I've been waiting for those nuts, honestly. <laughs> what? I have been waiting He's for those nuts. He's honestly. the great oak of life. He's the great oak of life. What? I have been, I've been begging him, please give me your nuts, Ed, yeah. please. Yeah, I'd like a couple yeah. of his nuts yeah. as well. The whole time, yeah, yeah the whole same, time I've same. been like, those look like delicious nuts. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I mean, you're listening to the one, you're listening to the one and only Lewis. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's only one. I don't know how you do it, bro. You have the ability to charm the world. And that would make sense if the music you were playing was... Charming. Charming. <laughs> this is fucking shit, but you're nice. No, I? no, 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 joking, no, 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 no. By charming, I mean, you know, more reflective of this experience. Yes, 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 yes. But there's two sides to who you are, and mm-hmm. there's two sides to everybody. There's multiple sides to everybody. We're all many thousands of people throughout our lives. Yeah, absolutely. But you sort of bring this joy to the room, mm-hmm. and yet you reserve this heartache and this, this pain for yourself. Yeah, got to pay the bills. Got to pay the bills, my man. It's no, more than, I think it's more than that. Yeah, no, for sure. I think for me, it's like I am. Um, I love the deflection, but I ain't letting you no, get away no, with I'm, it. I, boing, come right back to me. There yeah, you go. Um, yeah. I am fully like. I'm quite like a. I like to feel things, like, and I really do like. I think I think, I, I think we all do feel like broad spectrums of emotion. Yep. And I think for me, um, I don't. I like in my most of my life, I am very much like full of them. And, mm. and like I'm mm. up for a laugh and that's mm. what I want to do and I think in terms of the music I kind of get out all my happiness do you know what I mean like I, I'm a, I have more opportunities to share that with people and think of than, than I could ask for do you know what I mean like mm. 
even playing live shows, even though I'm singing sad songs, I'm, I'm sharing my happiness. It's people. a community experience. But yeah, do you know what I mean? And I think for me, my sort of or like sadness or like my heartache or my sort of refl- self-reflective stuff where it could be about my anxieties and stuff where I like to talk about them with other people and, and do that I think in terms of writing I think that feels more interesting to me like I know this this song that's like about that's come out is about love and being in love and stuff and that's that's one thing but when I'm thinking of what makes me happy it's like I'm, I'm not like, and, well, this song's kind of, I suppose, about that, but it's more like. But you're still searching for the reflectiveness, for the melancholy. Yeah, in the like I, I love, I love sitting in melancholy. Like, mm. see, on a Sunday night, mm. where it's like, no, you're not hungover or anything, but Monday's around the corner, and I don't have a normal job, so it's not like that doesn't. Doesn't anything. matter. Sunday affects everybody. Yeah, do you know you what I mean? You have no job, and you still know that it's the end of a week and the start of a week. Yeah, for sure. I like to sit in that sort of melancholy, or like if I stay up to three a.m., I sort of like. Yeah. That's when I start to think about life and all the rest of it and I think that's where I enjoy writing songs and I think because mo- for the most part I am like a quite jovial and I like to take the piss and I like to have a laugh I like I want to focus on the the, the bit where I'm not because that seems like a more interesting thing for me to explore I love that answer because it's it's what goes up must come down mm-hmm. it's actually part of the human experience mm-hmm. and most people strive to get back to the joy yeah they want exactly. to. They want to ignore, distract themselves from the from the pain. Mm-hmm. But you are actually waiting for it. Yeah, yeah, I like. I like to see where it cut. Like, where does it come from? Wow. What? How long is it sitting there? Why is it sitting there? Why is this thing sticking with me longer than you know pain that I've had prior or whatever? That is I mean. incredibly dedicated to the moment. But it's interesting, yeah, because I was like talking about like control and all the rest of it. It's like I was talking about this, this thing of like. Set like I'm quite bad for like self sabotaging and all the rest of it, and I think I, I read a thing that said that self sabotaging is a way of having control because you're like, I, this is going really well, and I'm scared of the outcome. I don't know where this is going. I so need I, to take it back to a place I actually recognise. If I ruin this yeah, for yeah, myself, yeah, at least yeah. I'm I doing know, it, and I know that feeling, yeah, and I know yeah, what yeah. it is, and I yeah. know where to go yeah. to get the reassurance I need to feel validated. Exactly. It's a crazy. I'm mm-hmm. so happy that we're able to better understand this. Mm-hmm, for sure. I think that the cynicism is is um, a byproduct of of growth mm-hmm. because we have to be cynical about something in order to shave off the rough edges and get it into something that everyone can understand, mm-hmm. right? So that's going to happen over a year, decade, decades. It's mm-hmm. totally not about our lifetime. We're so consumed with what we get done in our lifetime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes the steps we take are going to help 40, 50, 100 years down yeah, the road. Yeah, yeah. And I think that, you know, we are in that space right now where we're shaving the edges off of it. Mm-hmm. We all want it smooth. We're committed. We're in therapy. We like it. The mm-hmm. people I speak to don't do it, don't understand it, or the naysayers mm-hmm. who say, you're Lewis Capaldi, you're rich. Always the base level answer. Yeah, what yeah. do you got to complain about? You're rich. They bring it back to economic freedom. Mm-hmm. It's not about economic freedom. It's about yeah. mental health. Yeah, yeah, of course. Absolutely. And that's and that, that's the important thing. And I think as well from the outside looking in sometimes, because I, I know I find, I, I find it frustrated where it can be used sort of online as a very like the sort of surface level stuff of like if you're struggling out there just know you are seen yeah you are heard yeah. and you are loved and i'm like i'm fucking having a panic attack what does that do for me do you, you know what i mean like it's it like, because it feels so much like a brand yeah it just feels like a slogan and like yeah. what is it you're not actually talking like that's yeah, why i yeah, was yeah. Kind of, i was kind of almost like reluctant initially to to kind of delve into it because it just feels like and i, I and I, I i don't want to like slag anybody off or whatever but like i think in terms of like Instagram influencers and stuff that can really sure. take this and like sort of bastardize it in terms of being like that sort of like what do those three things mean you are seen you are heard you love that's such like a broad thing See, I have a slightly different approach to that because I understand that mentality and I've felt that way mm-hmm. but again I think it's a rough edge we just got to sand down yeah, 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 I think yeah. even if you're out there and you're being a bit disingenuous about it or you're just looking for some cheap clicks that day still a positive message yeah, there, I'd rather that than fuck you Zane you know what I mean yeah, that's some clicks yeah. you know so for me it's like I, you know, yeah, for sure. But you feel that way and I felt that way because I think we both really struggled throughout our lives. Yeah. I also took my time getting into this conversation. Yeah, yeah. And I want to also acknowledge that, you know, what you recently said and come out and said is is amazing. You know, yourself, Billy, others have come out and said that, you know, Tourette's is a real thing and this is what mm. you experienced. Was that something that, you know, took you some real courage to do or did you just feel like it was time and it just it just floated out of you? Well, I just got told. I got I only got told like at the start of this year. Wow. Like March. Because I've always done like little like things to yeah. like tech and even when I look back at like um like interviews in twenty seventeen because I wasn't doing interviews before obviously. Yeah. But um when I first started doing this it's like I can see little like the movements that are kind of more exaggerated now. Sure. So I do like my neck cr- cracks a lot and I kinda of lift my left shoulder up a lot. 
and my face kind of moves a bit and I do these deep breaths. Yeah. I can see them sort of like like micro versions of them in the interviews that I've done in the past. Yeah. And I think I've always done this stuff and when I went and spoke to the psychologist who kind of diagnosed me with it or whatever, mm-hmm. I think that's what you call them, psychologists, yeah. but um, they told me about it. And I, and it it was like a shock, but it was also like, oh, relief. that explains it's so much eh? in my yeah. life. Yeah, 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 it totally is. And it was like one of those things where we did some shows over the summer and I was t- like twitching a wee bit on stage, um, which I've got a handle on it a bit more now, I think, but I was twitching on stage and I saw a lot of people like, oh, what's is he okay? Like he's twitching a lot, yeah, what's yeah. going on there, blah, 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 blah. And I thought, I'll just I'll just put people's mind at ease, like, like things are fine do you know what i mean and, I, and it wasn't like a i didn't it wasn't like a press release type thing but it was like i was on an instagram live and i was like oh by the way i know that's a press release yeah 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 <laughs> do, 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 do what i mean but, um, but i was like oh I've, oh yeah i've got to rest that's why i'm twitching so much by the way so yeah don't worry about it and then it became this thing but uh it was it was only like yeah i've kind of always been okay for like if something's wrong with me i'll or not wrong with me but you know what i mean if i've got something yeah 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 for sure going on with me i'll i'll share it with the room because it makes me I don't really care <laughs> selfishly I'm not caring about like anyone else's view of it I'm just like this makes me feel better to share the fact that I it doesn't just be, here's the beautiful trade it doesn't just make you feel better that is number one and yeah, we should yeah. never forget that you should do that for yourself of course but it does help other people yeah yeah of course of I course mean, to see you know, the thing but like for me it's like being from that I would be lying if I said it wasn't from that yeah. selfish point of being like yeah. I just want to ease the room here and be, oh, I suppose as then I guess the whole thing I've been like no but you're right as well in this day and age you're on stage twitching and all of a sudden someone gets a shot of that they twist it up and you're drunk you're this you're on drugs oh, and it's just like man yeah. and, and then you're just having to go from from behind the reality yeah, yeah, yeah. just to catch up to the reality exactly and it's 100%. such a waste of time it's like let me just be straight up with people I've found over the course of my life that actually I'm, I'm really protective of that responsibility especially mm-hmm. in conversation Yeah, because I think that entertainment masks how important that is yeah and i think the entertainment is now falling away a bit Mm -hmm. and we're actually realizing that the purpose of the artist is to teach yeah and guide of course and i'm a fucking good teacher you're a fucking (laughs) great teacher i'm a fucking good teacher listen up guys seriously teacher of the year and classes in session classes in (laughs) session right here with zane law yeah (laughs) yes there you go geography (laughs) (laughs) were you good at school uh, no, I was lazy, very, very lazy. That doesn't mean you're not good. I think I was clever. I never applied myself. It didn't interest me. It's one of those things of like you're talking about being obsessive. Yeah. I'd, and even in music, what we were doing in music wasn't what I wanted to do in music, so I didn't care about it. But I was obsessive about like I would play music outside the school yeah. and that kind of got me by. And I was lazy. I never studied. I don't think I've ever studied for anything in my life, like in terms wow. of like, exams and stuff. But I still managed to like squeeze by, like bees. I was all good. How there. do your parents relate to somebody um, who, uh, at an important moment in their life, who's forging their tools in order to move mm-hmm. forward in life, who's getting constant reports saying this guy could be so much better than he is? Um, they were, I think, because they saw how much I cared about music. They felt confident and, you were cool. Yeah, like because they saw how, like, outside the music, I was fucking like going for it and I was playing shows and I was yeah, like yeah. really like every weekend I was playing a gig, every. Wednesday, Thursday, I was doing rehearsals or whatever. Like, so they saw me in that. As long as they saw me put an effort in elsewhere, they were like, "Like, if you get B's and C's or whatever, it's cool. We know you're going to like yeah. thing it, do music or whatever." But because even if it wasn't this, it was weddings, it was playing in pubs, it was whatever. I just wanted to get in front of people and sing. Do you know what That's I mean? beautiful. That is your education. If you can have an educational simultaneously to organised education, then I think mm. you should have a licence to be able to do what you want with sure. your life. And I think that's the thing they saw, because my brother was a singer as well and mm. he kind of, he waned off a bit in his like teens. He was better looking than I was so he got more girls and things and mm. I think that's what kind of took him off on that, that tangent. Gave but, you the hunger though, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Gave yeah. you the hunger, right? Yeah, that's it. Gave me the fuck you juice. <laughs> You're like, man, I'm gonna drink that fuck you juice. You know, like, <laughs> fuck you, I'm gonna be fucking <laughs> huge. <laughs> fuck you juice sounds like we're talking about Ed Sheeran's nuts again. But, um, <laughs> uh, like, and, um, uh, but yeah, so he kind of went off, and I think my mum and dad were kind of expecting that. Me, but when I got to like 15, I was like yeah. putting on my own shows and all the rest of it, and it was like seeing that sort of. Commitment, I guess, was the sort was the was what gave them the the confidence that I would be yeah. okay in some fashion. I'd be able yeah. to make a living. As parents, I mean? you know, we try not to seek reassurance from our kids because it's not good for identity development. But mm. it's hard to shake that. And yeah. um, 
I do think framework's good. And you just obviously you created your own framework, realized mm. what you wanted to do and what you love to do. Has it totally. has it turned out to be everything you imagine it would be now that you're actually achieving? Um, real question, real answer. That's a good question. Yeah, uh, I know it's the last minute. Um, I'd say yes and no. What's the yes first? Live shows. Love it. Playing live, yeah. touring. Yeah. Um, and don't get me wrong, that's the touring that aren't like touring can be really boring sometimes, especially yeah. if you need to look after yourself. Yeah. Um, Are you good at that? Mm, no. Yeah. But like for when I say look after yourself, I basically mean don't get pissed. Yeah, don't get drunk. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 standard. I kind of, I need to, I, I can't booze on tour otherwise I can't. Because I'll have a, I'll, I'll I'll just it just won't stop. Yeah, and, and it's like I'll I'll fuck it. I'll just be anxious the next day. You yeah, know? yeah, 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 yeah. So touring, yes, all that stuff. I never really gave much of a or paid much of attention to like music videos or like recording, like the actual recording process and all the rest of it. So when that stuff came, it was like T- tough. It was tough, and I, I hate photo shoots. I hate being in front of like. These cameras are fine, but I hate being in front of like cameras in general, and I don't feel I just always feel uncomfortable about it. And mm. I grew up listening to like Paolo Nettini was like my big thing, and he was always quite like shy of like. Oh, look, the first time I ever talked to Paolo, I felt like we just like lured the snow leopard out from the rocks. Yeah. I mean, it was crazy. I remember he walked in the room, and like everyone it was just like, Is he actually here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember when you played um, Scream. For the first time, yeah. and he came in, you played it, and then you played it straight away the second, yeah, yeah, like yeah, right yeah. after you played it. And I was yeah. like, This is unreal. But, like, yeah. there you go. Need a little it. trick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. Not, used, not, it, used it a few times now. It's right? not original, but it, I definitely do it well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? I think I played Chance the Rapper, um, no problem, six times, seven for 30 minutes. Oh, straight. wow. Jesus. Right, I was, okay. I mean, I was desperate for that interview as well. So, <laughs> Redbone. How many times did you play Redbone? I know that was the six Redbone. times. Redbone was 30 Redbone. minutes, Charles yeah. Gambino, and it wasn't. It was me and your mama. Me and your mama, yeah, oh, for, right, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. for thirty minutes. But straight. then, what year did that come out? Two thousand seventeen. Yeah, seventeen. Yeah, seriously, Paolo, twenty fourteen. That I was knocking out. it around. I mean, that was yeah. me testing the water. You're, you're, yeah, just teasing. Look, it, your teasing man it. got on a train from Scotland, came up, and actually showed up. Yeah, that was, I mean, he did nothing to your point. Get yeah, yeah. Point. And I think that's the thing. Like, yeah, I was. I, I kind of looked at people like that, and then I was just like, oh, so maybe you don't. You can just kind of. Thing. And then I realized not everybody can do that. Do you know what I mean? Not well, everybody can do that. Especially when you have your personality. I mean, I don't know what you would do with this energy if you didn't have a chance to connect. And we are, yeah. as a species, desperate to connect. So, mm. in a way, you kind of don't have a choice, even though you do. I know. I know what you mean. And I do feel like, I do, and I do like coming and having like conversations like this. And uh, and this is another thing that I, I've actually really enjoyed, which I, I thought I was going to hate, like doing the radio promo and, mm. uh, and coming and having chats like this and all these other things where I was really like, in interviews, I was like, oh, I don't know. Like, when I first started, it was... Because it's a weird as fuck thing to do. do and you, know you don't mean? know how much of yourself you can be. Yeah, totally. You've got 20 minutes with a stranger who wants to be your best friend, and then next, yeah, like, yeah. how do I be myself? I think once you started to be yourself and everyone loved you... This is this is, this is was the thing. I think my thing was... Because I remember when I first... 2007, 16 or whatever, when yeah. I first started kind of doing writing sessions there in London or whatever. Um, 1975 were really mysterious. Mm-hmm. That was the whole thing. They only had, they had like the big spaced out letters, etc. And everyone was like, you've got to be mysterious, got to be mysterious. And I was like... And he's another one we were right. waiting for his nuts. Oh, mate, honestly, I absolutely fucking love Matt Matthew Healy. Healy's nuts. He's, I would listen. We wrote, we did a song, we wrote together for this Sh- album. Shut up. Uh, he Do people put, know that? Uh, I don't think I've mentioned it before. Okay, so, all right, all right, all right. Look, y- you move all over the place, I move all over the place, oh, but sorry. we're still driving in the same direction. We love it, we love it. We're still yeah, on yeah. the same freeway, right? Yeah. And we just change lanes. Yeah, yeah. So hold yeah. that thought. We're going to come back to 1617, but I'm going to ask you right now. Yeah. Well, you tell me. Do you want to keep going on that one? You want to come back to Matthew Healy? I'm definitely fucking talking about Matthew Let's Healy. Let's talk about Matthew Healy. All right, cool. So how the fuck do you find yourself in a room with Matthew Healy? So I love the 1975. Same. I'm, my favorite, I think my favorite band just now used to be the Maccabees. Now it's 1975. Oh, God. Maccabees. My f- that was the first concert our eldest kid went to with the headphones on as a baby at oh, Reading. There Watch you go. Maccabees. Unbelievable. It's special. Yeah, unbelievable band. Yeah. So now, but now it's like 1975, and I love. The sort of like I just love how he is and how they are as a band in terms of his the way he is now especially like he doesn't give a he's fuck. a fucking troll yeah he does not give he's a, a fuck. fucking troll like, honestly see the stuff like the, did the you always said to me it was just like oh yeah we could do one of those big interviews we could like you know <laughs> go up on a mountain yeah. and be all pretentious also, and also stuff. the cheek of Matty Healy to call someone else pretentious oh, and that's what, <laughs> and that was the beauty of all the comments I mean they got like a million views and all the comments on TikTok were just like the cheek of this motherfucker yeah. calling you but it was so good as well. But that's I think I think the amazing thing about him as well is that sort of like self awareness is a massive thing. He know like you don't put like simple Epicurean philosophy in your song and I know. and think 
Why are people calling me pretentious? When, like, we went to, when we went to Manchester, he had the whole entire day mapped out. I yeah. had no idea what we were doing. He was like, right, we're going to go here. We're going to go here. And here's why we're going to go here. I mean, he was interviewing himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, totally. It was amazing. He's incredible. Yeah. I absolutely love him. And I think that was the thing. He reached out to me on Twitter initially and was like, mate, your class, like you, like talking a bit more, talking about interviews and stuff like that. And mm. he was like, you make me laugh. He says, it'd be good to do some, like get together, write some songs and write some like funny lyrics because mm. obviously he's... He, he puts it in his songs a lot more than I do. And he's funny too. He's fucking hilarious. He's, he's funny so and funny. lyrically really funny. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. That's something I like. That I'm envious of that. Like yeah. that sort of like being able to like translate that sort of who the humor side of him into like it could be even like. Well, you know what that is, Lewis. That is Matt Healy learning how to take the, the the accusation pretentiousness and using it as a tool. Yeah, exactly. Well, that was it. The sound when the sound video came out and it was all that stuff of like the bad reviews and that on the screen. You are pretentious. I'll show you pretentious. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'll sell you pretentious. Exactly, and it's incredible. And I think so. Basically, he reached out and it was like, all right, cool. But I thought it was just like a nice thing they were saying. And then I was like to my manager, like this is three years later. Can you ask him, like, if he's into it? Well, you sat on that for a few years. Yeah, because I was like, we'd finished the album, and I was like, there's no way he's been fucking serious. Right, like, right, This is right, Matt right, Healy, right, do you know right, what I mean? Right, uh, And then a few years later, I was like, mm, let's fucking ask. Some of you loved him in a hat. I was feeling, yeah. I was feeling myself. Good. And he yeah. was, and he, we came down, and I went to the studio in London, and he was a lovely guy. Yeah. Hilarious. Smokes a lot of weed. Smokes a lot of weed. Smokes a lot of weed. Lot of Some weed. of the biggest joints I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. When yeah. I was like, fair play to you, mate. Uh, when we went to the interview real quickly, man, I mean, I was there. He was like, oh, he's just out the back having a smoke. And I was like, oh, God. Oh, mate, it's mad. But that's the thing he did. He's, he, I was like, there's no, because if I had like two draws of a joint, I, I got um, prescribed medical cannabis in the UK for yeah. my anxiety. Yeah. I took one drop and I started Terrible. hearing voices. It Terrible. was horrific. I'm not good on it either. I don't handle it well. Yeah. So I'm like, there's no way he's going to be able to fucking do this. Anyway, the first thing, right, we start writing. Yeah. And he showed me songs, and he showed me, like, a really early demo of um, Looking for Somebody to Love, and I wow. was like, that's amazing. But it was like... Who so goes in for a songwriting session and then plays a future hit from your own band? What I know, a but fucking shitter. At the time, it was like, just oh, like... I can't wait to write with you. By the way, this is one of ours. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. But at the time, it was just like the, looking for somebody to love. Yeah. That was like, oh, I had. And I was like, that's amazing. Like, fucking so sick. And I was like, so this is kind of the idea I've been working on. And I play my song, blah, 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 blah. And it's kind of just like me over chords, mumbling, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, oh, that's amazing. Who'd you write that with? And I goes, oh, no, I wrote it. And he goes, oh, like, you write your own songs. <laughs> that's what he said to me. And I was like, and I was like this is exactly how I, I wanted want. this, how <laughs> I wanted this I want. to go. Like, that's exactly what I wanted my Healy to say. He's no, It's fucking unbelievable. I was like, that's class. And I was like, yeah. And he goes, no, of course you do. And, I, and it was fucking hilarious. And then, obviously, he's like smoking weed. And the song we wrote is really good, and I love it, and I yeah. listen to it all the time. And he's like... Did it make the album? No. no. But it's <laughs> blessing. It's because it's weird. It's because it's like proper, proper weird. And I'm like, I'm not there yet. Maybe next record... Sure, sure. We'll, we'll get a bit, we'll get a bit f freaky with it. Sure, but um, sure. he... Uh, but yeah, and he would sit and he would be like... He'd be he'd sit in kind of silence for a bit and I'd be like playing away thinking and like coming up melodies. And then I'd be like, is he still paying attention? Or is he like, is he... I, I see bored of this or whatever. Yeah. And then he would jump up, right? Yeah. And give you four of the best ideas you've ever heard in your fucking life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then he'd sit back down yeah, at you and you go, yeah. oh shit. Right. He's like, what he's doing is, and what a lot of pop writers don't do yeah. is he's listening. Yeah. And he's like fucking really, really listening. He's fucking like, he's just, sometimes you're in a room with writers, they're just thinking out loud and they're regurgitating and they're fucking just spewing shit at you and you're like, Right, just give me a space to think. Where he's sitting in silence, and oh, he does weirdly. He does all his thinking in his head, mm. which in the room is like you know, it's a bit odd initially. But you're like contemplation. Pharrell was saying that to me the other day. Mm. It's the magical space where true greatness comes from. Yeah, and the rest of it is really just noise. And we're mm. fully capable of making it. We yeah. all make it. Yeah. But he's like, I strive for contemplation. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's Matt Healy's like fucking calling it to a T because he was, he was incredible. It was such a an amazing thing to be in a room with him. And then I was supposed to do another couple of sessions with him and I got COVID so I couldn't do it. But yeah. um, You got a song out of it. Uh, we got a song out of it. Tell us a really amazing story you haven't told yet about this album. I don't know. I don't know about an amazing story. Well, I was really, I worked with uh, Tobias on this one, Tobias Jesso. Not often you write songs with people and keep in touch and yeah, thing. Yeah. Then he came over over to Scotland Yeah. <clears throat> and we had we had a studio and and this is again quite niche if you're from Scotland, you know this. A studio at a place called Cumbernauld, right? Yeah, yeah. Which is not it's not the most glamorous of places in the world. It's very, it's probably about the furthest thing from LA you could imagine. Yeah, yeah. And it was like this. It's kind of like a dinky little studio. There's, it's really like. Was there a pub? 
there was no pubs in the vicinity because it was in an industrial estate. He came there and just to have him, because I was with the, the TMS boys who I do a lot of my stuff with anyway, but to have him <laughs> come to come on old and be like, this like huge Canadian. <laughs> his eyes must be popping yeah, out of his head. Just like, and he, but he fucking lo- Straight he loved from the it. Adele session. Yeah, he fucking, <laughs> exactly. Like, and he just finished, he rapped an album. I think the, like it had just come, it might have just come out yeah, at that point because yeah, yeah. it was late last year. Yeah, and it was just it was fucking just incredible to watch him in that environment because this is like a studio that like sixteen to seventeen year olds who are in their first bands come and hire yeah, out and play yeah, it. Yeah, and we could set up yeah. shopping it. You go from there to the Barfly. Exactly. Yes, or something even worse in even, Glasgow. Even <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I think uh, just having him there, and to be fair, it was like a really this is. Like it was a really open conversation talking about like the expectations of things and have they uh, has this experience been what I expected or yeah. even maybe wanted? Yeah, and I think I was having a lot of like really difficult thoughts about it and like mm. kind of like I was I was realizing that I get a lot of anxiety from doing this, like <sighs> like being like there it is, yeah, bro. That is a real truth bomb because. Yeah. You said something, not to stem your flow, hold your thought. No, no, not to. But you said something just now in conversation mm-hmm. that is a very important observation for people listening to this conversation. Mm. Um, almost every artist I've ever spoken to gets anxiety from the process. Yeah. And it cures it and it helps it, but it's tough. Yeah, of course. We have to acknowledge that. 100%. And it's like, this is some, I can't remember who I was doing an interview with, but they were like, do you think this has this exacerbates it or do you think if you stopped doing this tomorrow it would rid you of, of a, a, a massive amount of anxiety and I was Great like fucking question who uh, asked you that I hate was, them it was uh, Zach Sang you know Zach Sang uh, I know Zach Sang yeah nice nice guy nice I like lad. Zach nice I, I love Zach good He's, at what he does good Can't at what mad he does at that question no not at all I'm gonna use it <laughs> and I was like but I was like yeah I, I could I, if I stopped tomorrow I, I would I'd probably my Tourette's would get a lot better in terms of like because it guess what I'm anxious or stressed anxiety wise I'd probably the number of panic attacks I have would reduce drastically. But what would you do? But yeah, but that's the thing. I would then be in the space of like I don't have like a purpose to like I don't I don't know what I'm doing. Like I'd be floating through, or I'd be, yeah. and it's fine. Like I've I've I get like I could I could do it. Like I, I'm lucky enough to be in that position where I, I could stop doing it tomorrow. Yeah. But I just I'd, I'd be fucking bored for a start, and it's like yeah, yeah. Also, how would I meet women? But um, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just it, it's one of those things where I, I I wouldn't want to like this is it's worth having this stuff. And also, I think it's important, it's bringing a lot of stuff to the surface that I probably had to address anyway. That if I, It was I, there. Do you know what I mean? I would have just floated through and it would have reared its head at some point. Do you know what I mean? But uh, what was funny was I was talking to Tobias and the guy for TMS mm. and me. And you're talking about Tobias is like early 30s, I think. Yeah. Just something, yeah. Or something like that. And has had his career doing that sort of incredible, like Goons and like, an amazing yeah. album and doing yeah. this sort of indie record and then becoming this huge pop songwriter. Yeah, yeah. And then you have TMS who are like pop, the UK, like kings. And when it comes to like pop music, they do obviously loads of other stuff. Mm. They came up through doing like, they were like garage DJs for a bit and then all this. And it's just interesting having these, all these different paths. And I think everyone's at different stages in their lives. So the TMS boys are a bit older than Tobias. And it's like, we all had the same sort of like feelings about like either feeling we're not enjoying this enough for feeling like this either isn't what we're signed up for or maybe like this isn't isn't um, isn't making us feel how we want it to it's make really us feel. It's really important you acknowledge that. Totally. And it was just like, it was just interesting we all had and how sometimes it feels like a bit of a fucking, and I get, and I'm, I'm just, I'll just say it, it feels like a fucking chore a lot of time. It's like fucking really, yeah. at this point when it's really difficult and it's yeah. really like, this is like, this is my life and sometimes I feel like it can ru- it's ruining my life in certain aspects in terms of like how sometimes I feel about myself like you're talking about writer's block yeah how I feel about myself when I can't write a song well, or blah, you blah, blah. write those songs then yeah and then we get them mm. and we hold you there yeah yeah of course and all you want is to keep growing yeah exactly and that this connection I think is at the root of <clears throat> a lot of artistic um uh, discontent yeah mm-hmm. and I think that's that was that that that's exactly right and I think we the song we wrote that day is the last song on the album it's called How I'm Feeling Now and it's my favourite song on the record mm. 
everyone I played it to hated it. <laughs> like I'm talking about my mum and dad hated it, my manager hated it. I think they've come around now. I think it's it's quite a hard song to listen to in terms of the chorus, especially in terms of like what I'm saying. Like the lyric is like, so here's to my beautiful life that seems to leave me so unsatisfied. Uh, no sense of self, but self-obsessed, always trapped inside my head. And then it's like, I thought I'd be happier somehow if you're wondering how I'm feeling now. It's like the last lyric. This dude. And the thing. This guy can sit here for the last hour. I mean, we've all fallen here over heels in love with you, man. Oh, I love you all too. It's hard not to appreciate you as a human being, man. But mm. uh, then you can come and drop those 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 words. I, I can see why they, what those closest to you struggle with that. Yeah. Because... They want to see you happy. Mm, of course. And you, you have to acknowledge through your art that there are times you're not, and it's tough. Mm, yeah, and I think it's easy when you're not a songwriter and you're not in music and you're looking at it from this sort of like, here's this song that you don't get the nuances of the conversation that we were having. Sure. It's easier to listen to it and be like, oh, he he hates his life and that. And it's like, no, this is just like a, a trough this is mentally that I was We in. hold you in that moment. Yeah. You have a moment and we hold you there. Yeah, exactly, 100%. And yeah. it, that for me was like, in terms of writing the album, and that's quite a long-winded answer to your question, cool, sorry. Man. But um, Loving this. just about that for me was like the most special moment in writing the album was kind of realizing that oh, this isn't just like a a me. I'm not kind of I'm not special, and my suffering was a nice thing to to know. Do you know what I mean? It's weird to think like oh, this is only happening to me. This is only happening to me. Like that's no, it's nice to know that I'm not special at all in that um yeah. in that um arena. Everyone's suffering the same and everyone's going through the same stuff. So it was, um, yeah, it was just really, that for me was probably my favourite writing moment of, of the record for sure. Mm.